Okay, so without further ado, uh, John mentioned uh, we need people who uh, walk the talk. Well, Richard Walker certainly does. He's MD of Iceland Foods. I met him a few months ago when I went to look at their new revolutionary stance on basically kicking plastic out of their supply chain, which um, we've heard a lot of pledges recently, uh, and this is the real deal. So um, over to Richard Walker. Thank you, Lucy. More on that later. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, um, it's a real privilege to be invited to talk to you today about why Iceland decided to become too cool for plastic. And it's particularly appropriate to be doing it here in St Agnes because, believe it or not, this whole story began with surfing. Specifically, me trying to surf here in Cornwall and elsewhere around the world, and therefore becoming increasingly conscious and aware of the scourge of plastic on our beaches and in our oceans. And, and that's what inspired me to start looking at this problem in more detail. Because I'm a, a long-standing supporter of Greenpeace, I naturally consulted them uh, and, and benefited from their insights and input. And increasingly, I felt a real personal need to take a stand and do something positive about this. Why? Well, because I'm a human being and this planet is the only life support system I've got. And also because I'm a dad of two young girls and I want to do everything I can to ensure that when they grow up, they can enjoy the oceans and our environment as we all have. Why Iceland? Well, we're a small company in the context of UK food retailing with a share of just over 2% of the market. But we're big enough to stand up and make quite a bit of noise when we want to and encourage others to follow our example. And actually, with our 900 shops, 25,000 staff, 5 million customers a week, if we can get them to care, then we can really start to enact proper change. <coughs> How did I know this for sure? Well, 20 years ago, my dad, who founded Iceland in 1970, decided to make our own label range free of genetically modified ingredients. And this was entirely based on his personal conviction that it was wrong for customers to have no choice but to buy GM food. At first, everyone else in the food industry told him that this was completely unnecessary and technically impossible. But once uh, we'd done it, consumer demand was such that it meant that every other UK food retailer had followed suit within months. And I'm proud to say that that's the reason why the UK's food is almost completely GM-free to this day. In fact, we've been a radical disruptor long before that even. Back in the 1980s, we were the first UK retailer to take out artificial colours, flavourings and preservatives from our own label foods. And we were the first retailer to get serious about capturing and recycling CFCs from refrigeration. So was it easy to persuade my colleagues on the board? No. No, it wasn't. There was, there was a lot of scepticism precisely because plastic is such a cheap, lightweight, versatile material. Even though we had a, a proven track record of inventive radical thinking, I still had to persuade them that getting rid of plastic packaging was something that we could achieve without bankrupting the business through increased costs and without creating a whole host of other problems such as shortening shelf life. I pointed to the fact that supermarkets in the UK are responsible for creating one million tonnes of plastic waste every year. And so clearly, someone had to take the lead and do something about it. And I pointed to the fact that there, there, there should be no conflict whatsoever between being in business for profit and leveraging business as a power for good. We talked to a whole range of experts before we made the announcement. We talked to our suppliers to make sure that it could be done. And we talked at length to Greenpeace. We talked to government. And importantly, we talked to our customers. And we found that 80% of them would support a move by a supermarket to go plastic free. So on the 16th of January, we announced that we'd completely eliminate plastic packaging from our own label products by 2023. You may also have, uh, have recently seen our announcement on palm oil. And we pledged to become the first UK retailer to eliminate it from our own label range. 
an, another product in which the food industry has come to use by default at the huge cost and, in my view, completely unacceptable environmental damage. Now, I've got to be honest, and I've got to admit that it's easier for, for us than many other businesses, partly because we carry a smaller range than other superstores, but mainly because we're a privately owned British family business that can take a long-term view on doing the right thing for our customers and the environment, even if it costs us money in the short term. Most of our rivals have to report quarterly earnings to the stock market and therefore are driven to short-term thinking. So as we hoped, our pledge to eliminate plastic packaging from our own label range had a truly massive impact. In fact, far exceeding our expectations. Following on from Blue Planet 2 before Christmas and the government's 25-year environment plan a few days later, we helped lift plastics to the top of the news agenda. We're on the front page news and generated literally billions of opportunities to see online. We had an immediate letter of congratulations from Michael Gove, and Theresa May stood up in Prime Minister's questions and praised Iceland and said other supermarkets should follow Iceland's lead. More than 200 MPs signed a motion supporting us, and in the days and weeks that followed, we saw similar announcements of action from a range of institutional institutions from the Royal Household to the BBC. Several other supermarkets also announced plans to reduce single use uh, to, or to make it entirely recyclable or compostable, which absolutely delighted us. Because if we're going to su succeed in eliminating plastics as an industry, we must collaborate. So having researched the market, we weren't surprised that pretty much everyone was supportive, but we did have two, um, two criticisms from completely opposing standpoints. Firstly, why will it take so long, five years? And secondly, is this really possible at all? Well, why will it take so long? Firstly, five years isn't a long time to achieve the removal of plastic packaging from 1,400 product lines. We're talking about 300 different suppliers, and we need to allow them time to transition. In some cases, this will mean changing our whole supply chains, investing in new machinery, and then developing, trialing, testing, and then implementing completely new packaging solutions. And in all of this, we have to be really careful that removing plastic does not solve one problem and create another, such as leading to more food waste. We want to take advantage of new packaging solutions that come online over the next five years. It's a truly massive challenge, but if we can do it in less than five years, then we will. Is it really deliverable? Well, we made a start in February with the launch of two frozen ready meal lines in paper-based trays rather than black plastic. These are 85% plastic free. We're still using a thin plastic coating on the inside and a plastic film on top, but we're trialing removal of that as we speak. By the end of this year, we'll have switched all of our frozen black plastic ready meal trays to paper-based or aluminium alternatives, which will remove, get this, 100 million of these non-recyclable, single-use, high-carbon trays from circulation. And that alone will save 2,000 tons of plastic every year. This year, we'll also change all of our egg boxes from, paper, uh, from plastic to paper pulp, and that will save another 600 tons. We've become the first UK retailer to adopt the Plastic Free Trust Mark, developed by a cam campaign group of Plastic Planet, to clearly signpost plastic free lines to consumers and customers. And you'll begin to see these appearing in our stores over the coming months, starting with soft fruit, uh, potatoes and mushrooms at the end of this summer. And we've also led the way by becoming the first supermarket in England, Scotland and Wales to install reverse vending machines for plastic bottles. These machines give customers the opportunity to earn a 10p voucher for every plastic bottle deposited. And this six-month trial will inform us what cu customers think about these machines and the best system to move forward with. Earlier this month, we began to trial uh, reusable, recyclable paper bags to replace the 5p single-use plastic bags that we currently sell in our stores. Now, the introduction of the 5p charge actually reduced usage by 80%, but we still sell 3 million single-use plastic bags every week. So in total, our program will reduce Iceland's total footprint by 16,000 tonnes of plastic every year and make the world a better place. 
So what else do we need to do? We're obviously interested in the potential of bioplastics and biodegradable plastics, though most of what I've seen suffers from one of two key failings. Either bioplastics uh, replicate fossil fuel plastics so well that they'll still be around in 500 years, contributing to uh, marine pollution, or they don't degrade properly. And by that, I mean completely disappear in a normal marine environment. We're very clear that there's no point jumping out of the plastic frying pan and into the bioplastic fire. But our minds are not closed, and if technology does deliver a plastic that breaks down in water and leaves no residue, we will welcome it. I'm personally very excited about the potential for compostable packaging. There, are, there is a new wave of innovative startup companies around the world who are producing fantastic quality, fully biodegradable packaging made out of renewable biomaterials. They're made from organic matter rather than fossilized carbon. And in our addiction to oil, we often forget that our best resources are things like seaweed, trees, and corn, which can be grown and regrown, sequestering carbon along the way. So I was talking about the fact that it, it's organic, it's, it's fully, truly biodegradable, um, and it can be grown from renewable materials. We, we, there was a, one of the other speakers had a, a slide uh, showing some seaweed packaging before. Um, and also, these, these feedstocks could give a real boost for UK farmers as well by using marginal agricultural land and providing a, a market for otherwise waste matter from crops. So um, through the composting process, this, this packaging can be turned into nutrient-rich topsoil as well. And when you consider the fact that the UK has a soil fertility crisis, we lose about 3 million tonnes of topsoil every year, any circular system that treats waste as a resource should surely be celebrated and encouraged. We all need to make the most of this opportunity, and we can do that by getting government to impose mandatory food waste collections in every household across every borough in the UK. That will um, create the demands needed to drive the investment in industrial composting facilities around the country that will actually allow compostable packaging to be properly composted, and that in turn would make the possibility of a genuine replacement to plastic a reality. At the same time, the packaging industry and retailers should adopt a common symbol that donates whether a piece of packaging goes into the landfill bin, the plastic bin, or the composting food waste bin. So I guess all of this can be summed up in a word we've, taught, we've mentioned a lot today, which is collaboration. And if central government, local authorities, businesses, and consumers all work together, I really believe that solving the plastic crisis is well within our grasp. Uh, collaboration is why we have our, our beer here, which we've got on display at our stand. And actually, I think you're, you're all going to drink it later because we've got a couple of hundred <laughs> bottles. I hope you like it. Um, now, we, we waste a lot of bread from our stores every, every day. And uh, we've, we've now diverted that to uh, a brewery in South Wales. And they're going to make beer out of it. And then the profits from this are going to go to Surfers Against Sewage to help with their plastic cleanups. And that's, uh, that's a great example of an uh, unlikely but, frankly, pretty cool collaboration. And I got to surf with, with Hugo the other week. Um, and it also, collaboration is why I've recently accepted the role of CEO of the Council for Sustainable Business, which is a, a newly formed group of industry leaders who meet with Michael Gove every six weeks. The idea is to come up with actions and recommendations for DEFRA, and wider government departments to inspire business to become more environmental. Now, I love to end on a good quote, and uh, there's none other than Sir David Attenborough, who I had the, the pleasure of meeting last week, in fact. And if we stop all the talk, zoom out, and pause, I think it really comes down to this. We can now destroy, or we can cherish. The choice is ours. Thank you very much.